Hello everyone, this is uh, Shad Reis from Detroit Medical Center and this is SIF22. With me is Arthur Reitman, he is from Wellstar and he is leading interventional, coronary, structural at the system and he is going to talk to us today about few topics related to what happened after COVID and cardiogenic shock. Arthur, nice to have you. Thank you for having me, Shadi. Yeah, yeah, so we had a phenomenal pleasure. session. You were on the panel talking about shock and um, awareness, new protocols, and new stages. Yes. Can you just keep the audience up to speed with what's happening? Well, I think it's a, it's a very exciting time, Shadi. The, the fact of the matter is that um, as many of my partners have told me all along, um, I really have followed in their lead as we have taken a message of cardiogenic shock um, from diagnosis to more broadly speaking about the topic, not just within our own cath lab, but moving that conversation across a spectrum of care. So starting with emergency medical providers going all the way to the CCU and, and beyond. I think that like any very complicated messaging that occurs, the more broadly we're, we're all speaking the same, we're all having the same conversation, the more beneficial it is. Yeah. When we're using the same language, when the terms are identical, then everybody un really tends to understand what we mean. And, and I think that some of the best um, programs with the highest success rates for cardiogenic shock, that is what they do. They speak uh, consistently with a message that everyone understands. Yeah, and uh, in terms of you're going to be coming the the new governor for Georgia ACC, American College of Cardiology. What do you think this organization should bring to increase awareness for management of cardiogenic shock and other entities as well? I think it's a superb question. The the fact of the matter is that our state is, is uh, affected disproportionately in the areas that are less well served. A number of hospitals have closed um, throughout our state in areas that really can ill afford to, to have that occur. So we spend a, a lot of time, the former governor, uh, of the state for the ACC as well as um, the former president of Sky, Jeff Marshall, runs a course on emergency cardiac care management. Through courses like that that are for EMTs and nurses and, and techs um, predominantly, we all are speaking the same language about cardiogenic shock, STEMI, um, what the likelihood is of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and and how to standardize therapy for yeah. that. And, but that's very important. You're mentioning very important points starting from EMS all the way to the cath lab and CCU. It's like everything else we do. We, we spend a lot of time, I, I believe, in training, learning what to do in the cath lab. Yeah. In point of fact, over time it evolves to what we do from the time the patient has the onset of chest pain to the time that they are back at home. It's no longer just limited to the hospital. We spend a lot of time trying to understand how to, um, how to have the patient succeed in his or her own care. Absolutely, yeah. And so now after COVID is hopefully gone, the second pandemic is gone, how is this affecting the volume yeah. as well as recruitment in trials and studies and are we coming back or still we have to be cautious? I think that um, uh, Atlanta has been uh, a little bit bolder than other places around the country. I think that in Atlanta what, what we have seen is a lot of our volumes rebound to their pre-COVID levels where we are really suffering, and I'm not certain in terms of what's happened in Detroit, is that the staffing levels are so far below um, where we were when all of this started. A lot of nurses and techs um, have gone traveling 
this has really hurt our ability to take care of our patients. Absolutely. And, and um, I, from what I understand talking to a lot of people, this national trend has been very detrimental to a lot of healthcare systems. Right, and uh, now we have, after COVID, a system got affected financially and the nursing situation, the staffing situation, the uh. cath lab, nur nursing, I mean, nursing units, we always short on people to take care of patients. It is, um, th they are the real heroes and we, um, I think our dependency upon them I think has has become so much more the the lack of an adequate resource. Um, the focus has has really been on that for our healthcare system, ensuring that there are enough nurses to take care of all of our patients. Because uh, this is this is really been a key focus, um, I think, around the country. Absolutely, yeah. Well, Arthur, thanks so much for your time, for talking to us. Thank you, Shani, on multiple for having domains. me. Yeah. We're, we're, very uh, we're very privileged to have you. Thank and you. And you've done, you've done a, a great job here, I know, Th talking thank to you. so, so many people. Thank you so, so much, Arthur, for your time. Thank you. Please watch this video and others on SIF uh, YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from SIF 22.